In this video, we're going to see how to set up Firestore Database in our Jetpack Compose project with MVVM Live Data. Firestore Database used to be known as Cloud Firestore, and it works this way. We start essentially with a root, and under the root we have a collection, where a collection is something like an array, an array list, or something of that nature, and that will point to a series of individual documents. Think of a document being something like an object, or it could be serialized into a single JSON document. But the neat thing is those documents can have further collections, and those collections can have further documents, and this can keep going. So one specimen of a plant might have multiple photos, but then we might have multiple collections of specimens as well. So you see how it kind of sets up this hierarchical nature. First, we need to integrate Firebase with our project. So to do that, we'll create a Firebase project on the Firebase console. Then we'll update our build.gradle dependencies, and then we will add a Google Services JSON file to our Android Studio project. After that, we can start creating our Firestore database database by creating a root collection, and then we can integrate it into our code by getting a Firestore instance and saving a DTO or a data class to that instance. Let's jump right in. We start by navigating to firebase.google.com, and then log in if needed, and then go to console. Next, let's choose add project. I'll call this one my plant diary. So it can add several value added features along with the database to our project, including things like A-B testing, which is really crucial in a mobile application because it allows you to try set up an experiment and see the results, see if it creates the value that you're expecting to create. It can also be used to toggle features on or off, which is really important because remember, once you deploy your application out on the Play Store, it's going to run on devices that you don't own and you don't control. Many other things it can do, like Crashlytics and the like, where it's taking a look at uh, crashes and reporting in real time. Let's go ahead and leave that on. We'll come back and we might add that later. Okay, choose our Google account. I'm going to choose one that I already have and now create project. Our project is ready and we continue. Note that we can use this on iOS, Android, and web. Let's go ahead and choose Android. Now it's going to ask us for a package name. The best way to find that is in the module build.gradle and you see there's this application ID, which for us is app.plantdiary. That works. So I'll paste and then we'll call it my plant diary. The SHA1 fingerprint is something that we don't need right now, but we will need that later when we integrate Firebase authentication. So we'll go ahead and skip that. We'll come back to that in a bit. Now, download config file. Take a look at the screen capture here. It gives us very good instructions on what we need to do. So we go to our application, but we want to go to the project view, and then we want to drop it into this app directory. What I typically do is look for the proguard pro rules.pro file, and then I know I'm in the right space. Let's go ahead and download. Back to the IDE, I changed from the project view, or from the Android view to the project view. And then I see the app folder, and I see ProGuard Rules Pro. So I know I'm in the right place, so I can drag this and simply drop it on app, add to GitHub, or add to Git rather, and we see that it is now in the correct location. And next. Now a few things that we need to add. First of all, at the project level build.gradle, we're gonna look for build script, repositories, and then Google. There's a good chance it's already there. And sure enough, project my plant diary, I see build script, I see repositories, and I see Google. Next, we need to add a dependency. So I'll copy and paste. Now it also indicates that we need to add this all projects, repositories, Google. In previous versions, I had to do that but I found that in, in the latest version of, I guess, Gradle or the Compose project that I'm using, I don't need to do that. And as a matter of fact, it created an error when I tried to do that. So I'm going to leave that one alone. Next, we're going to take a look at the app level build.gradle, which is this one here. Make sure to tick the Kotlin radio button, and then we can take a look at this. So note a couple lines that we need. Apply plugin com Android application. Now take a look up here and you see plugins ID com Android application. It's a little different syntax than they reference here, but that's okay. These two are one in the same. So that one's already done. 
Now apply plugin com Google GMS Google services. You notice that that one is not present, so we're going to need to add it. But let's keep the syntax we have in our existing build Gradle. We don't need to use this syntax here. So I'm going to copy and paste, and then I'm going to change it from apply plugin to ID. And don't forget to remove the colon, as that's not needed. Now a couple of dependencies. I'm simply going to copy these one at a time and add them down to the dependencies section down towards the bottom. That gives us access to Firebase as a platform. And Firebase as a platform has several different features that we can use, from authentication to the real-time database to the Firestore database, analytics, so on and so forth. So if I want to add one of those features, I might need to add another dependency as well. I know we're going to want to use Firestore, the database, so I'm going to go ahead and add that, and then I'm going to hit Sync Now, which is going to rebuild my project with all of these dependencies that I've added. And the build is successful, which is good. We will cover storing something to Firebase in a later video, but I do want to confirm that this build did indeed work. So I'm going to go into the main view model, which is where we're going to do our saving. And I'm going to go ahead and declare a variable of type Firebase Firestore just to make sure that everything resolves. You see it even did an autocomplete for me and it automatically pulled the import in. So at this point, I'm hopeful that it is going to work okay. So this has been a video on setting up Firebase Firestore and getting it integrated into our project. In our next video, I'm going to show how to actually save a specimen object into Firebase Firestore. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.